Welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on functions and being able to identify if something is or is not a function. Your objectives today are that you will determine whether relations are functions, and we will use independent and dependent variables of a function to determine the domain and range of a function. The question I'd like you thinking about today, what strategies can you use to determine if a relation is a function? So this is our focus today. I'm going to show you several different strategies. What is a relation? A relation is a relationship between inputs and outputs, where X represents the inputs and Y represents the outputs. So we see this relationship between X and Y in ordered pairs. So we have our X coordinate and our Y coordinate, and there's a relationship between them, X and Y. So we can see our relation is these three ordered pairs with these three X or inputs and these three Y coordinates, Y values or outputs. We could see them in a table. So it's the same ordered pairs, just in a table. So we have our inputs, x, negative 2, 4, and 6, and our outputs, y, 3, 3, and 7. We could do a mapping diagram where we have our inputs in one set in order, numerical order, negative 2, 4, and 6, and we have our outputs, 3 and 7, noting that we have two outputs that are the same, so we only list it once in our set. And then we map. Negative 2, that x, maps to 3. And there's a relationship. Our 4 maps to 3. And 6 maps to 7. Noting that the values, the inputs, negative 2 and 4, both have outputs of 3. They map to 3. And our fourth is a graph. So we can graph our ordered pairs negative 2, 3, 4, 3, and 6, 7. So all of these show a relationship between an input and an output. Now let's talk about functions. What is a function? A function is a relation that pairs each input x with exactly one output y. There are two ways to determine if a relation is a function. We can use a mapping diagram, and when we do, we want to look to see that each input maps with exactly one output. So negative 2 only maps to 3. 4 only maps to 3. 6 only maps to 7. So this is a function because each input maps to exactly one output. Students often get confused because negative 2 and 4 have the same output 3, but that's not what our definition says. Our definition says as long as this input has one output, it's a function. This input has one output. This input has one output. So when you're using a mapping diagram, you're looking to see if any input has two arrows off of it to the same output. We could also use the vertical line test. If we graph our ordered pairs, which were the negative 2 to 3, right? So we see this. This is an ordered pair. 4, 3, and 6, 7. So if you're given a mapping diagram, you can take away your ordered pairs from this. So negative 2, 3, 4, 3, and 6, 7 are my ordered pairs from my function, or my relation, which I've determined is a function, graphed. And if we can pass a draw a vertical line through every point on the graph, and it only passes through one point of the function, it passes. So vertical line, it goes through one point. Vertical line, only through one point. Vertical line, only through one point. So I have a vertical line through each of the points on the graph, and it only passes through one point. So it passes the vertical line test, and it's a function. 
So this is the same relation, and we've used two different methods to determine that it is a function. Your turn. I would like you to use a strategy that I've just shown you. You can pick which one you like and determine if this relation is a function. Please pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So here's our solution. I'm going to rewrite this with color. So our purple are our inputs. Negative 5, negative 4, 3, 4, and 5. I know that this relation is a function because each input maps to exactly one output. Special note here, since each input is a different value, we know that it is a function. There would need to be at least two ordered pairs with the same x value or input for the relation to not be a function. So remember, each one of these, negative 5, only maps to one output and there's no other negative fives. So we know that it only has this one output. Negative four maps to this output. There's no other outputs. So it does not matter that negative five and negative four have the same output. It matters if we have multiple inputs to different outputs. All right, try another one. Here's a table of values. It's a relation, but you need to determine if it's a function. Pause and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's look at our solution. So I'm going to color code this. Let's look at all our inputs. We have one, two, three, three, four, five. I instantly see that I have two X values, two inputs that are the same, and three has an output of eight and an output of nine. Therefore, I can determine that no, this relation is not a function. The input three maps to two different outputs, eight and nine. So if I graph this, I would go over to a graph and go three, eight, three, nine, and it would fail the vertical line test because the vertical line would pass through both of these points. Here's another one for you. Please pause. Determine if it's a function and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So our solution is we're looking at this input two, which maps to three and maps to seven. So therefore I can determine that no, this relation is not a function. The input two maps to two different outputs, three and seven. Now, another one for you. Go ahead and determine if this relation is a function. Pause, come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. And I'm gonna use the vertical line test because it's a graph. So here's my first vertical line. It passes through one point on the graph, one point on the graph, one point on the graph, and we can keep going and every vertical line I draw passes through one point. Each point has a vertical line through it and there is no line that passes through two. So therefore, yes, this relation is a function. It passes the vertical line test. Let's talk about independent and dependent variables. An independent variable is a variable that represents the input values or X of a function. Dependent variable is the variable that represents the output values y of a function. The dependent variable depends on the value of the independent value to be determined. So our y is dependent on our x. Let's look at this. This is an equation, a linear equation, but it's also a function rule. Another word for an equation is a function rule because we can state that this function where y is a function of x, that means that y is dependent on the value of x. So we're gonna have our independent variable where we input a value for x and that determines y. So this is independent, but y is dependent on knowing what x is. Let's see how this relates to our domain and our range of a function. So domain is a set 
of all the possible input values x of a function. The range is the set of all possible output values y of a function. So if we look at our function rule, y equals 3x minus 7, our domain is going to be the set of numbers that are our inputs or our x values. Our range is going to be the set of values that are our outputs or our y values. So when I have students do this, I ask them to make a table, negative 1, 0, and 1. So we want one negative value, 1, 0, and 1 positive. It just gives you kind of a varying amount when you're going to graph. Now we learned how to graph a line by doing this and choosing three inputs, noting that any real number could be chosen. But if you're going to use this on a graph, you want to have reasonable numbers to put on your graph. But you could put fractions, decimals, you could put a hundred, you could put a million if you wanted to. Any real number could be your input for your x values. I always choose three because even though a line only needs to pass through two, that third one is our check, right? Because if it doesn't go in a line, then we know we've made a mathematical error. All right, let's go ahead and find our y values, which, or our range, which is dependent on our value of x. So we're going to rewrite this with our input x being negative one. Three times negative one is negative three. Negative 3 subtract 7 is negative 10. Now let's try the 0. We're going to replace x with 0. 3 multiplied by 0 is 0. Subtract 7 is negative 7. And our input 1 for x, 3 times 1 is 3. Subtract 7 is negative 4. So now this is our set of inputs. So our domain is negative 1, 0, and 1, and we really should have dot, dot, dot in here, or in dot, 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 because it extends infinitely in all directions. But right now we have a finite set, because this is what we showed. And then we have our range y, which is the domain values negative 10, negative 7, and negative 4. These brackets here just refer to a set of numbers. So specifically, even though this is a line and extends in an infinite direction, this domain and range represents my table of values. But understanding that this is the equation of a line and it is a function. And it has an infinite domain and an infinite range. All right, your turn. Noticing that there's no line here. This is a fine, what we call a finite set of values. There are specific points. We have seven points on this function. I'm telling you that it is a function. We also could see that because it would pass the vertical line test. But I would like you to find the domain and range of this function. Please pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So the first thing I'm going to do is note all the ordered pairs. Negative 3, 0, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 4, 0, 6, 1, 4, 2, 2, and 3, 0. So now that I've identified my points, you can see that we have our domain values, our purple, our x values of our x coordinates. I'm going to list them in the set in order from least to greatest, and then my range I only need to put 0, 2, 4, and 6 because we wouldn't want to list 0, 2, 4 a second time. There's no need. So our domain in this function has 7 values. Our range only has 4. And if you wanted to show how they mapped, you could use a mapping diagram. But this is the domain and this is the range. Your turn. Go ahead and find the domain and range of this graphed function. Come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So the first thing I'm going to do is note that our x-axis helps us identify our domain because it's our inputs, our, our x values. So I can see that this function is 
finite. It stops here. It's not continuous. It doesn't extend infinitely in all directions. So negative 5 and 5. So my domain is between and equal to, so it has to be greater than or equal to negative 5 and less than or equal to 5. And it's all the real numbers in between. So it could be negative 4 and a half. It could be negative 1 and 1 third. So all the values, but including negative 5 and 5, those inputs are on this function. Our range, we're going to look to our y-axis. And we're going to note this, this point it goes over to 2 on our y, and this point goes over to 5. So our outputs of all the ordered pairs that fall on this line are going to be the set of numbers x is greater than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to 5. So this inequality, this compound inequality, represents our range, and this compound inequality represents our domain. And there you have it. That's how you identify a function and the domain and range of a function. I hope you enjoyed this today, and I hope you'll come back and join me at The Magic of Math, where we're going to master math one video at a time. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and leave a comment if you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a, a good day.